The late 1880s were a slightly odd time for the Royal Navy when it came to cruisers. They'd just completed laying down the Orlando class, notionally their fourth class of armoured cruiser, but in some ways it was also the first, since the preceding classes were, at least originally, sail-rigged as well as steam-powered, with the attendant effects on their gun layout. But whereas every other major navy would either build or continue to build armoured cruisers in the late 1880s and through the 1890s, the Blakes marked the Royal Navy abandoning the type for almost the entirety of this time period. The problem that the Royal Navy saw was that an armoured cruiser could stay with the fleet, or it could conduct passive protection of commerce, but a fast protected cruiser would always be able to run away from its far more heavily protected foe. Since commerce protection doctrine called for the active hunting of enemy raiders at this time, this in turn called for a ship that would need the armament of an armoured cruiser in order to enjoy a good margin of firepower over likely prey so that it could engage multiple enemies in a single voyage, but would, in order to have the speed to run them down, it also needed to be quite fast. With armour still of the compound type, it was impossible to provide any kind of meaningful belt armour as well as speed. One of the major concerns was converted ocean liners, which tended at the time to be quite fast and quite long-ranged compared to warships. Thus, in 1887, the new Director of Naval Construction, William White, offered a fast and large protected cruiser. At first, the armament was very heavy, two pairs of single 9.2-inch guns at either end, with ten of either the slower-firing 6-inch guns or a new 70-pounder quick-firing gun mounted five per side, and an array of smaller quick-firing guns at all points to deal with torpedo boats. Designed to reach 22 knots, the design could run down and kill anything that might conceivably be used as a commerce raider. This was approved in principle, and work on refining the design began. This involved, amongst other things, halving the main battery, and upgrading the engine power to allow the ships to reach their target top speed, even if they were deeply loaded. The new ships, as a result, were huge. Although they displaced 3,500 tonnes less than the then-building Trafalgar-class ironclad battleships at just over 9,000 tonnes, they were a full 55 foot longer than the capital ships, albeit they were also 8 foot narrower. Final armament was two single 9.2 inch guns, one at each end, with ten single 6 inch guns present in a two deck arrangement, with a pair of armoured casements on either side, and three more guns per side in shielded mounts, one deck higher. But these 6 inch guns were now quick firing guns in their own right. The 70 pounder had not worked out. Either 16 or 18 single 3 pounder guns or 47mm guns, were still included scattered all around the ship, depending on your source as to whether there's 16 or 18 of them, and there were four torpedo tubes, two submerged and two above the waterline. Power came courtesy of four vertical triple expansion engines that drove a pair of screws, as there were two engines attached to each shaft, with one being able to be disconnected per shaft for cruising purposes. The boiler plant provided 13,000 indicated horsepower on natural draft, but the ship was designed to generate 20,000 indicated horsepower with force draft to attain the 22 knots that were required, albeit the ships didn't quite make 22 knots in all circumstances, falling just a few tenths of a knot short at deeper loads. Armour consisted of a curved protected deck, 3 inches thick on the flat and 6 inches thick on the slopes, with a 12 inch thick conning tower, four and a half inches on the gun shields of the 9.2 inch guns, and six inches on the casements on the lower six inch guns. This combination of speed, numerous six inch quick firing guns, and a main battery of a pair of 9.2 inch would equip all British first class cruisers until the Monmouths, with only one exception. The Blake's sheer size and ostensible power triggered something of a minor cruiser arms race, and various one-offs or small runs of very large cruisers were built by other navies, the Royal Navy especially focusing on Russian ships like Rurik, which would ultimately lead to even larger and faster ships being laid down. But for the moment, the two ships of the class, Blake and Blenheim, were laid down in 1888, launched in 1889 and 1890, and commissioned in 1892 and 1894, respectively. 
Initially dispatched to foreign stations, the two ships were recalled to the Channel Fleet shortly thereafter, and would often feature in major naval exercises, and occasionally, thanks to their large size, would be used as transports who could move an entire crew to or from an overseas station, which allowed the Admiralty to keep another large cruiser or even a battleship on station whilst cycling the crew around. In 1903, it was proposed to upgrade their 9.2-inch guns to the latest model, delete the lower four casement-mounted 6-inch guns, and then use the saved weight to provide casement armour for the higher-mounted remaining 6-inch guns. But as the ships as a whole were thought to be getting a bit out of date, nothing was done. Instead, in the late 1900s, the two were moved to two secondary duties as destroyer depot ships. Blake served in this role for the 2nd and then the 11th destroyer flotillas, and was eventually scrapped in 1922. Blenheim served in the depot role in the Mediterranean, and could be found at Mudros Bay supporting the Gallipoli campaign in 1915, before she was also scrapped eventually in 1926. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.